if government then has to take over. If if you're not going to support, for example, you if if Freddie and Fannie go bankrupt, the government's going to take over, right? Mm -hmm. If the government, the post office is going bankrupt, Freddie went bank bankrupt, Fannie went bankrupt, Social Security is going to go bankrupt this year, according to the latest report. Mm -hmm. Medicare is going bankrupt, Medicaid's going bankrupt, the FDIC all going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So. My next question is, why do you trust the government so much? Because that's the only, what else is left? What's mm. going to take over if capitalism isn't there? Well, when you say the post office is going bankrupt, what makes you think the post office is, exists to make a profit? Well, the point is, who's going to pay for all this? Well, well these are government services. Who's going to pay for the roads? Who's paying for the traffic lights? I, but it, Who pays for the point. army? I mean, these are things that, we don't expect the army to make a profit. No, it's you not You don't expect that. the fire department to make a profit. But the country, Barack Obama... So I don't expect the post office to make a profit. All right, so because the post office service won't. that we need. So Medicare won't you know, make a profit. So it shouldn't gonna, make a profit. Social Security won't. It shouldn't. And in fact, okay. let me tell you something. But they're insolvent. There's a difference. No, they're government not has insolvent. mismanaged they're it. They're not oh, insolvent. Yes, they are. No, 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 listen. The, the reason why it looks like there's not enough money in Social Security that, that we may run out in a few years is because guys like you and me, who make over 110,000 a year, and I how do you know how much? And I, make? I I'm going to guess you make more than 110,000 a year. None of your business. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, people who are listening to this right now yeah. are probably going to hear this for the first time mm -hmm. that that you and I, mm -hmm. after 110,000 dollars, pay zero, zero Social how most Security people know tax. That? Really, you think most, most people, people know? Social so, Security so do you was think a right, Do you think it's right that the people watching this are are having to pay a flat tax around seven percent on their wage of forty or fifty or sixty thousand dollars, and you and I don't have to pay the flat tax no, 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 no. on but, everything that we earn? No, no, do you think that's right? It's a very. You, you, you think it's right? You are purposely misrepresenting what Social Security was originally. Because intended. because let, let me, you gotta, let let me finish, finish. No, let no, me no, finish no, no, my no. point. Because okay. if you and I and people who make over $100,000 paid the same flat tax the guy making $50,000 a year you is missed paying, the point. there would be, let me just say this, because mm -hmm. it doesn't get said, Go ahead. there would be enough money in Social Security to last to 2087. The point 2087, is... 2087, if the wealthy paid their fair share. Wait a minute, but everybody gets Social Security, if you go back to its original intention, the, this is money that was supposed to be put away as a sacred trust. If you paid in your whole life, or your father paid in, or any of your friends paid in their whole life, mm -hmm. then that money would be available to them when they retired. Mm -hmm. When you retire, even though you stop at $110,000, you don't, you don't keep getting more based on the money you were made. You get a capped amount, so everybody would pay in, and they get a little bit back in their old age, et cetera, et cetera. It was not designed originally to be the end all to retirement for people. Yeah, originally, but... but it became essentially your pension in your old age. Right, but how much, so my next question is, how much of people's income do you, Michael Moore, want the government to confiscate? Uh, well, for people like you and I, or, yeah, or for everybody. Well, I think, I think you and I uh, should be paying uh, probably twice what we're paying right now. So I pay, I pay, in, I live in New York, mm -hmm. I can't pay twice. How about our federal, federal I pay 60% of my income. No, you in don't. New, oh, yes, sir. No, you don't. Yes. Ap Michael? I, <laughs> you want to take your second bet? Yeah, go ahead and add it up for me. It's federal, state, mm -hmm. local, right. county, sales, property, county. 60%. Nassau, uh, Nassau County. You live in Nassau. Oh, I thought you said you lived in the city here. Mm -hmm. oh. well, you, 60%. So I can't double, I can't double I what I, I take, can't Michael. Speak for Nassau I'm 20% in the hole. <laughs> well, I'm not sure the people in Nassau County appreciate your contribution. I bet they do. <laughs> yeah. Helps pay for the police and the fire, the roads, how, and no, no. the functioning of how Nassau County. How much should County. I be able to keep? Can I keep 20% in you know, your world? Uh, when, you don't you, like, when you and I were growing up, I mean, people paid 70%, up to 70%, on the, the wealthiest. The top, the top marginal rate. The top marginal rate. And, and it destro nearly destroyed the economy. No, it, are you, can, do you remember how the wealthy lived back then? They were doing great. J JFK came into office, and he dropped the top marginal rates, and we had economic growth. Reagan came into office, stopped, dropped the top marginal rates from, from 70 to 28%. Revenues to the government doubled. They're plummeting under Obama's plan, and and the country created 21 million the new jobs. The country Michael. plummeted. 21 million new jobs. Plummeted under Reagan. How many Reagan. jobs have Obama lost in the, the short? jobs? The job loss started under Reagan, and it's been going downhill ever he since. He created 21 real, million. Michael. Real wages haven't gone up since Reagan's election. Can I ask you this? Obama promised that if we passed his stimulus, unemployment wouldn't go above 8 percent. It's now 9.8 percent. Did he lie to us? Well, I didn't make that promise. He did. Did he lie to well, us? You lie. worship him I in your film? Was, I think that was his... I worship him in my film and yeah. the little altar I have at home. At home, with the, the, the candles. candles that I'm lighting. <laughs> uh, he didn't lie. I think that was his hope that, mm -hmm. that would happen. Hope. 
Well, but he's trying to undo a mess it's George left Bush's behind fault. by George by Bush. not George uh, Bush, George W. Bush. George W. Bush. Yes. Okay. So the point is, so Barack Obama, he promised no lobbyists. He promised no earmarks. Did he mm -hmm. lie about that? Well, I think that there's a lot of people that are disappointed about some of the things that have happened. I, who, no one's going to say that they're thrilled with everything that's going on. I just think I'm willing to give the guy a grace period to figure it out. Figure, mm -hmm. you know, and he's and not if gonna, he screws up, how long is your grace period before you say, I expect jobs created? Well, let me tell you something. If he screws up, if he really goes back on his word, if he becomes the president of Goldman Sachs, for Goldman Sachs, and by Goldman he Sachs. He supported TARP. You don't like TARP in the movie. If he's, let me just say this, if, if he really doesn't uh, come through, it won't just be me. It'll be a lot of people right. who had a lot of hope in him that he was going to be different than the last guy, All right, back the to guy before him. And if that doesn't happen, you're going to see, um, first of all, sadly, you're going to see a lot of young people just give up because it's their first experience with politics. They got behind him, and then and then it didn't happen. And they're going to turn into cynics, and they're going to go, yeah, these politicians, I guess my parents are right. You know, they're all the same. I don't think they're all the same. You I know. think there's difference. Well, I hope that that doesn't but, happen. But I mean, it's in Obama's can hands. Can I go back to my question? Mm -hmm. How much of my income do you think I should be able to keep? Well, give me a percentage. How much do you want to keep? I want to keep, I want to keep 75%. You want to keep saying, uh, mm -hmm. and I want to choose where I give at least ten or fifteen percent a year in, in yeah. charity. My wife and I are pretty generous. I, yeah. Um, no. How much do you think I should be allowed to keep before I go to jail? I think, <laughs> I think that you should be paying half of your income, not the people watching this, but your income. I pay more than half in now, taxes. so I'm already overpaying. I've never met anybody that's paid that's paying more than fifty percent. I'm right on now. salary. I get two salaries. Can you bring your tax returns in tomorrow and show you us? You bring you bring me yours. I'll bring me mine. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> what is that about? That sounds a little creepy, man. It does. We're not in the locker room here. All right, let me ask you this. You, you've talked a lot about um, the health care. When your movie Sicko came out, yeah. you know, I think yeah. we actually have the video here. Um, you know, when you go to Cuba, the bullhorn, the scene that everybody knows about. Do we have that video? They become known around the world as having not only one of the best health care systems, but as being one of the most generous countries in providing doctors and medical equipment to third world countries. In the U.S., health care costs run nearly $7,000 per person. But in Cuba, they spend only $251. And yet, the Cubans are able to have a lower infant mortality rate than the United States, a longer average lifespan than the United States. They believe in preventive medicine. And it seems like there's a doctor on every block. Their only sin when it comes to health care seems to be that they don't do it for a profit. Do you think you only got access to the hospitals and the areas they wanted you to have access to? We went to? wherever we want, wanted let, to, yep. Yeah, well, let me show yeah. you. We, we have some undercover video of some real hospitals in Cuba. Mm -hmm. You want to take a look at it? Uh, Let's roll the tape. <laughs> There's no. This, yeah, this, this so, is. This, we had an yeah. undercover video. This sure. is a real Cuban mm -hmm. hospital. Yeah. I want you to take a look at it, and I want you to look at the conditions, and it's about as filthy and about as dirty and about as disgusting as any hospital mm. I'd ever seen. Now, in your movie, you yeah. leave a very different impression. Um, so far, I haven't you, seen have any. Have you ever seen an American hospital? That well, funny, but the thing is, you call this a hospital. I'm waiting to see the patients. Oh, well, the the, people, look, at that's a patient's bed. Well, they, you, no, they probably uh, Sean, where well, is that it? is a hospital oh, really? where in are the Cuba. People? Where are the that's, people? Well, they're not there, thank God. No, Would you yeah, want them to because be there? It's not a, because it's probably no, not. No, because it's a real hospital. Oh, really? That we're, okay, I'm waiting to see a doctor or nurse. Just keep rolling the tape here. There's a patient. You wanted a patient? You got got somebody in. We've got somebody. You wanted a patient? That looks like a Hang on, we may get a doctor in a minute if you hang in there. What part of this don't you like no. Oh, now we're back to the no people it's a part. Filthy, I love how you cut in a couple of six It's a people. filthy <laughs> pig pen. You guys are great. All right, I have a question. Keep me, rolling. No, I'm so waiting to see a doctor or a nurse or uh, well, Michael, anything. maybe that's, maybe, maybe no, that's the, the point. Maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the point. That's the point that doctors aren't there. No doctors aren't maybe, the your, maybe your no. analysis of their oh, system so they, was faulty. Oh, so you think they just roll the patients in to a hospital No, maybe with there's no, no doctors, doctors in doctors. the hospital. That's correct. That's the problem, Michael. Really? So they lure the sick into the hospital. Here's what I put them into the bed, and then there's no nurses or doctors anywhere. <laughs> That's your best moment. Let me Wait, ask you stopped rolling the tape. I was still waiting to see the hospital. That's the point. Let me ask you a question. So if Michael Moore gets sick, I'm going to give you a you choice. I'm going to give you a choice. Wait a minute. I'm going to give you a right, choice. Here we go. Here we go. The Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going right. to give you Sloan Kettering. God forbid mm -hmm. if you ever got God sick forbid, and got yes, cancer. Uh, okay. Plastic, you yeah. know, I, if you have any other problem, 
I'll give you the choice of the best hospitals in America or your Cuban hospitals where you say they have such a good life standpoint, which, by the way, I've read you bring your own toilet paper. Yeah, that's not true. I was there. I saw it. That, they, uh, they showed you what they wanted you to see. If I got sick in Cuba, I uh, feel like I would be taken uh, care of very well by... Mayo uh, Clinic or Sloan Kettering or well, Cuba? Well, who gets... Who living in Harlem gets to go to Sloan Kettering or the Mayo Clinic? Tell Are you me, kidding tell me? Tell me three drugs that was created in Cuba, because I tried to look... Because half the, it's the third, patents... It's a third world country. Oh, so they don't create any drugs. So, so they're created in the U.S. They're created with our tax dollars. You I realize that? You, you realize you. these companies are making millions on research and development that's paid for at our universities I got and with our tax dollars. I got a present for you because you say okay. you want a single payer system. Now, this is a yeah. whole stack, and I have another whole stack yeah. up in my office. Yeah. One in six NHS patients misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. We had a, the government rationing body of Great Britain denied women with advanced breast cancer the drugs they need. They said you can't have them. A, no. death, a death sentence. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, oh, don't say this about the British true. healthcare the system. British healthcare system. No, no. It's Fox News, it's on satellite now, so they're it. watching this in I Britain. Understand. No, they're laughing right now. No. Oh, no, yeah? Can you hear them laughing? Did you hear Daniel Hannon? He's been no. on the program yeah. and he's confirmed. <laughs> read, read from the Telegraph. Sean. Babies born in hospital corridors, right. bed shortages, cruel and neglectful care of one million NHS patients. Uh -huh. why did the British, Daughter claims why father did the, wrongly placed controversial right. to end of life scheme. Yeah, why? Doctors <laughs> told me it was against the rules to save my premature baby. You know, Restrictions on prescription osteoporosis. The din of British laughter now is, is, is my ears are bleeding. They're laughing at you. They're literally laughing We've at you. We've had Daniel you. Hannon you on this ridiculous. program. He agrees with me. Is Daniel we're Hannon the, a liar? We're the only Western country only Western democracy, industrialized country that doesn't have this. All right, next question. This, no, wait a minute. In Britain, they live longer than we do. They live longer because when they get sick, they don't have to worry about seeing a doctor. And why do people from Great Britain, Canada, France, here's an article about France, French government to tackle surging health care deficit, why do they flock to the U.S. They to the mid? Oh, yes, they do, People Michael. with money often go to American to hospitals. Here or to other places uh, that, around the world. I, could, I know Americans who've had to go for treatment to other countries. Uh, if you have money, you can do that. But the average American obviously can't do that. We've got nearly 50 million of our fellow citizens who don't have health insurance. Mm -hmm. How do you sleep at night knowing that? I, I, I sleep at night knowing that we c it's not 50. It's more like 12. That, w that oh, okay, figure so is a lie. So it's 12. Okay, I, I'll know. Hey, I support. I'll, I support I'll, I'll take your phony statistic. I'll agree with it. All right, I'll, 20, I'll pass off million. your phony statistic. 20 million. No, no, let's so say 12. Oh, 12. Let's 12 say million. 12. 12 million. So only 12 million. Can't see a doctor when they get sick. Obama they says 30, it. by the way, so he's in the middle. 12, but 12 million. So here's what I would do. I would increase tax benefits for anybody that can't afford it so that they could get their own insurance and uh, create a competitive nature. Hang on. A lot of these people tort reform, don't pay that much tax to the on the lower end. Portability, medical savings tort accounts. Tort reform, lawsuits, and, and, uh, and um, they did it in uh, Texas. insurance, doctors, and uh, liability insurance makes up about one to two percent of our health care here's budget. another question if, if our if America is so bad because I every time I read about you and I haven't even touched half the stuff I've researched about you if America is so bad why do people in Cuba why get, do you think it's so bad hang on no based on your analysis oh. if it's so bad and capitalism so, so bad, bad why well, do people a, in Cuba getting broken down dilapidated rickety boats or inner tubes country in, but you praise their system it's why do they come from? Because it's a poor country. Why does somebody? Why do we have to build walls to prevent people come here. from coming in, not going you're in? You're Irish, right? That's correct. Yeah. So how do you think your are ancestors you came? Yes. We how are you? not related. How, <laughs> how do you think they came here? Uh, they Our came people. poor, and they didn't they have health care, and they worked hard. So the poor have always come here. So what's your point about Cuba? Are you saying that that our no. great grandparents who came here from Ireland, they they came here because Ireland was such an how evil country? Come? Well, you're the are you one saying that says the Irish American capitalism is awful. You want socialism? You want a single payer? Wait, 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 wait. You're saying that our Irish uh, great-grandparents came here because Ireland was evil and they had to get in boats and no, come here. No, I'm saying they came here for freedom, Michael. This oh. is what you don't understand. Oh, well, that's what, yeah. They came here for so, opportunity, not for guaranteed health care, not for guaranteed school, not for guaranteed housing. They mm -hmm. came here for freedom. Yeah. And they wanted to make the best of themselves. Yeah. And, Michael, I'm going to be the first to tell you, I stand on my grandfather's shoulders yeah. and my father's shoulders. Right. Oh, we all do. We all do. And they didn't and, come here for Michael Moore handout. No, but you know what? When they got here, somebody did help them. But nobody, somebody helped. Not the government. Stop, stop for a second. Somebody helped my grandparents. They helped your grandparents. And sometimes it was the government. I agree with and you. And it was Franklin Roosevelt. And it was the New Deal that helped them. And, and for you to get to this place of being successful and having money, 
to want to turn your back on the people who were helped and say, no, 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 just let charity take care no. of it. You know, that's this not is, the answer. Why, that's my not question what I'm to you, no, my question to you is, why do you hate our government so much that you don't want to trust it to take care that's of the question. fellow citizens? That's a great question. We, you want to know why? Because the government is incompetent. No. The government, wait a minute, Michael, yeah. they promised to put Social Security money in a lockbox, and they blew it. They spent it. They used it to accumulate power. They, same with Medicare. They mm. spent it. They bankrupted it. They ran it into the ground. No, Freddie right, and Fannie, they ran it into Medicare the ground. Where's the Social Security money that was supposed to be in our lockbox, Mike? Well, yours still where is it? in 1936. No, I mean, where is it? That was a sacred trust. The way Social Security works now, and you know it's this. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's, <laughs> it's worse than anything Halliburton oh, could have done. man, I don't know why you hate this government and why you hate old people no, or you would want to say this. I hate old people. People love old people. Old people love their Medicare and their Social Security. Well, and, Obama's and, cutting Medicare $500 billion. The, uh, people, listen, that's, now that's, now you know what that's all about. You know He's that. cutting it. It's not cutting it. It's that, oh. that we're living longer than people lived in 1936, which is a good thing. Why do you trust government so much then? Because why do you think, why do you believe government that has failed mm. to, uh, to the public trust? Why do you trust them? Listen. I've been very disappointed in a lot of politicians and a lot of leaders we've had of this government. But when you say this government, this government to me is of, by, and for. It's a cliche. Why do you put just your this, faith in will government? You just ask me. Let me answer this. It's not a cliche. That's really, I don't understand how you can say that something so critical, so vital to who we are, of, by, and for the people, just to call that a cliche. No, it's not a cliche. The way you're you using it is a cliche. It's written down in our Constitution. It. It's who we're about. How did we survive you, all these years without nationalized health care? You should, we're not doing very well right now, and a lot of people are suffering, and it would do you and your, the good nuns who, who taught you. You know Sister <laughs> Agnes Lucille? She'd be very happy, I think. No, she wouldn't. If you would be. <laughs> no, that's right. She wouldn't how you turned out. I know. I'm evil. That's you, evil not capitalist. evil, but you're supposed to, you're supposed to you be there for... You want to my neck, don't you? Go ahead. No, you, I don't. You I don't want to. No, I don't want to. I just want you to, to be everything that you were taught to be as a Christian. I am as, a Christian. As a person who, who loves this democracy. I, I know it. you do. I love it. Then you need to start acting like it. And you need to start realizing that Michael. your fellow Americans who are hurting right now, they're in the same boat you're in. I agree. And that boat... We're going to sink or swim together. That's the best thing you've said in this interview. But I'm going to tell you one other thing. Michael, I want, I want Americans to be free. Capitalism, and I'll end it with this, and then I'll give you the last word. Capitalism made you, a kid from Flint, Michigan, a multimillionaire. It made me, the son of Irish immigrants, poor, you know, a successful person. Capitalism allowed that to happen. Castro would not let you have that happen. Socialism destroys incentive, it destroys wealth, it lowers the standard of living. America has created a standard of living that is the envy of the world because people in freedom were able to dig down deep in their hearts and souls, find their God-given talent, bring them to fruition, and that made everybody rich, even the poorest among us, and I've been in the, the Techwood homes, and I've been in some of the poorest housing projects, they live reasonably well by world standards. You get the last word. You've been watching too much TV land. I've been you to know, the Techwood homes. You've, no, I'm saying that you, you live in this old way of how you wish it would be. Andy of Mayberry, Hooterville, you know, oh, that's, that's the way it is right now, Sean. And you know this. Millions of people are hurting. We have extremely high unemployment. We have uh, 14, let me, you said I could have the last word here. 14,000 people today lost their health insurance in America. 14,000 will lose it tomorrow, and 14,000 will lose it as they do every day. 14,000 a day are losing their health insurance. They, these are your fellow Americans, and... I'll make and a deal with you. If you give up 95% of your wealth, I will donate another 10% of my salary this year. I want to see you put your money where your mouth is. Michael, you have multiple homes. You live a good life. I you're a multimillionaire. Yeah, you you're, give you're, the money. You show lead by example. I give know, up all your money. I know it bothers you that millions Ooh. of Americans have gone to see my movies and no, it doesn't bother me. allowed me to. It doesn't um, bother me. I paid for my own ticket. You know, there's 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 I want probably a refund. you know why why do you have <laughs> why do you have me on here? You know, there's there's uh, there's a hundred million Americans right now out there right you're now powerful, who Michael. have nothing. You're they powerful. have nothing. You're a but powerful why voice. Why don't 
Why don't you have the voice of the people on here who have Every nothing? Every night we have a great American panel. Every, uh, Michael, I try to People put, have nothing. I I'm talking calls. about the people, the I, people who are struggling to get by, who I'll are trying it, to live from I'll paycheck to with, paycheck. Where is your heart you. for them? Michael, I, get gener I donate generously every well, that single That didn't help year. the 14,000 who lost their health insurance today, did it? Your little bit of charity Michael, isn't going to do it, I went out last week. I went out two weeks ago to California because farmers are standing on line for food because our government shut off their water, and it's become a dust bowl. You know what? I spend every single day, I just believe the real answer is capitalism, the real answer is freedom, the real answer is liberty. Mm -hmm. You want a cradle to the grave society utopia, but you're not willing to pay for it, and in that sense you're no, a hypocrite, Michael. I just, no, actually, you are, you really are, I don't mean to be insulting, you, but if you're not well, going to put your, 90, your millions of dollars on the line, then you're a hypocrite, because you're benefiting from the system you're trashing. Yeah. And that's sad, Michael, you're lecturing me, you're benefiting from the system you trash. Yeah. I. Um I think that, you know, I was thinking about if there was a Sean Hannity uh, around back in the days of Thomas Jefferson or uh, John Adams or George Washington, you'd probably say to them, what are you doing complaining about this? You've really benefited from the system. Look Listen, at all the money you've made. I you know? have, Would I have, you say that to them? I have quotes from Jefferson. You know? And you know what they said? Jefferson and, and, and Franklin and everybody, you know what they warned about? They warned about putting our debt on our children and grandchildren. Yeah. They and you also, know what we're doing they also right now? Warned about, they we're warned us about the rich. Future. They warned us about the banks. They warned us about a lot of things well, because they knew. Because truth. they knew as wealthy men, they knew just what the wealthy would do to people if right. we allowed the wealthy to be completely in charge. Here's my challenge to you. 95% of your income, I want to <laughs> see you give away. No, I, no, no. 95% of yeah. your wealth, and then when you do I that... I will work for any legislation if that, you, that here's doubles our my taxes and yours. If I double my that? taxes, Michael, that's twice what I'm making and 20%. You don't pay 60% in taxes. Michael, I pay 60%. There's no way. 60%. There's no way. 60%. Bring in your tax returns. You want to make a bet? That, that, I'll bet you right now. I'll bet. You well, first, not I'm not going to show you my tax return. You did not pay. Uh, well, I'll settle for an independent person to audit the, you. All right, we got to go. You did not pay 60% of your income 60%. last year. And you did not pay 60%. All right, if you give 95%, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll make a deal with you. You make 95% donation of your wealth. I'll give 95% of, 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 of what you earn. That's the point. To the, to the people. So you don't believe in freedom. You're stealing my money. You're empowering no, I'm the saying, government. I'm saying if you want to have a bet, that's the bet. All right. Forget it. Goodbye. Michael Moore, appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Michael. All right.